Hey guys, this is Jason with Carnage Diagnostics. Today I wanted to go over how to do a draw test. I was an assistant shop foreman at a dealership and a shop foreman at another dealership for over 10 years. And the two biggest comebacks were uh, small EVAP leaks and batteries coming back on a tow truck dead. So I figured it'd be good to go over that topic and show you guys how I do it. So the first thing you have to do is test the battery, right? You could have a bad cell on a battery even if the battery's like two days old. Um, you don't know what you don't know, so always test the battery first. Second, if it's a multiple time comeback for a draw, make sure you open all the doors, the hood, the trunk, and you, you latch everything so it th the car thinks it's asleep. These newer cars, you have to wait like an hour before everything's asleep. So like if you just start checking the car, then you're gonna, you're gonna have a false reading. So don't even touch the car for an hour, let it sit in your spare bay, let it sit in somebody's bay who's not there that day and go to lunch or work on another car. The third thing is don't disconnect that battery. The second you disconnect it, all those ECUs, they lost all the power. So the, your ECU that was acting up, that was glitched, it's no longer glitched. So even after an hour, everything's gonna be perfect until about two more weeks till it's on the tow truck. So. Don't disconnect the battery to run this in line. Instead, use an amp clamp. All you do is you put it around a negative uh, wire and then you read a number right here. So you don't disconnect the system, you don't disrupt the system, none of that. So if on this screen it says that it's got 50 milliamps, then you're good. Now, if it says you have 90 milliamps or higher, then you have a draw, you gotta figure out what it is. So the next step that people will do, the mistake that they make is they'll pull the fuses and they'll see what the meter goes to. If it drops and that's it, boom. The problem with pulling fuses is the same problem with disconnecting the battery where you lose the power to that computer and the glitch is no longer there. So what the book will say to do is, is use millivolts and there's a chart that says if you have a 15 amp fuse and you have 10 millivolts, that that's equal to this amount of a draw. I don't think it's fast to do that. I think it's faster just to switch it to volts. And normally you will have zero across the board. If you have one that's 0 0.001 to 0 0.003 and higher, don't pull that fuse, make a mental note of what that fuse is and do all the fuses here. And then do all the fuses on the inside, wherever the other fuses are. And a trick that I use for the inside one Instead of laying on your back, trying to do each fuse like this on the inside with a flashlight while trying to read the meter. So I'll use this thing. It plugs into your meter. You can use this with one hand. You just work your way down your fuses. Um, you don't have to hold the two leads anymore. You could just go one by one with this very quick, very easy. So once you've found your fuses that are pulling the power, go to the wire diagram book. Figure out if they're related at all. An example is, say there was a 30 amp radio fuse here and I had 0.003 pull on it, but inside I had an amplifier fuse that was 0.02. So anyway, you look at the wire diagram book and you figure out that that amplifier is pulling, it's, something's glitched and it's stuck on and it's pulling power and it's sending a power signal to the radio to stay on and the radio is pulling more power, and the mistake guys will make is just pulling that radio fuse, see it drop down and think it's just the radio. When in fact, it's the amplifier commanding the radio to stay on, and that's the issue. So remember, get the big picture, get a wire diagram, don't disconnect the fuses, and don't disconnect the battery. So I'm gonna show you how the amp clamp works real quick. Okay, zero it out. So we have 0, 0, 0024, which is great. There's nothing going on here. Now watch what happens if I open the door just to show you guys the example. Yeah, so that's a massive draw. That would definitely kill your battery. So 
In the case where you had the first number, the 24, there's no draw on the car. You can, you can pull it back in later, recheck it later, but as of right now, there's no draw. If you pulled this, there's a massive draw. So you'd have to go through all your fuses and figure out what it is. So you saw what the draw went to when you open the door. Keep in mind, this is just an example car. This car doesn't actually have an issue. I'm just trying to show you what you would do if there was an issue. And we're gonna use this so you can see how this one works. All right, so we got, we're on the, we're on the fuse. That's very high. So you'd have to figure out what was going on with the circuit, try to, try to do the best you can without pulling that fuse, because if, if this was a computer stuck on, you'd want to figure out everything that was going on with that before, before you disconnected it. Another tool you could use that's helpful is a thermal camera. Um, sometimes the fuses are hidden in the box, you can't get to them, but there's a relay that they'll power on. So just take your thermal camera and go through all the fuses that you can see. Sometimes you can, you can tag an ECU with it and see that it's still hot. Um, let me show you that real quick too. All right, so you go to your fuse box. So you wouldn't even have to check all these fuses. You could use this and see what was going on with the camera. They definitely help speed up Diag sometimes. I mean, there's a, there's a ton you can do with the thermal cameras. So keep that in mind. If you guys don't have a thermal, then you should probably pick one up at some point. But there you go. That's what it would look like through a thermal camera. All right, guys, that was it. I hope you learned something today. I hope you learned a different approach to draws where you're, not, you're no longer losing that draw so the car doesn't keep coming back. Um, I'll put the link up for this in the description. And if you buy it, obviously, it, it helps the channel out. So thank you. Um, don't forget how important thermal cameras can be. And make sure you, I don't know where it's at, make sure you pick up an amp clamp. They are fantastic for this stuff. I'll throw the, a link to that out there too. And see you guys in the next one.